25. It's trying to catch up. It's, it's trying to catch up. It's hot on our six. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna push forward, which is gonna bring it closer to us if it has enough juice. It's still tracking us. We're at 40 miles an hour. We're at 50. Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Alex. Hey guys. And today we're talking about the Phantom 4. We just we're did- on the four, yeah. Didn't we just do the three? We did do the three. We were a little late to the game with our video on the three. It came out about two months ago. Mm -hmm. If you haven't checked out the Phantom 3 episode yet, make sure you do so in the links below. It's got a lot of the same features. The camera, the way the whole Phantom works in general, and the app, um, it's all very, very similar. But there are some new features. Yeah, and Phantom that's what 4. we're gonna talk about today. So one of the first features you might notice are these little eyes right here. They're not actually eyes, they're little optical sensors. And this is called sense in a void, which is one of the new features on the Phantom 4. Supposedly you can't run it into stuff. Yeah, it's supposed to keep it from just not crashing. The other thing about this one is it's supposed to be faster. A lot faster. Um, it's got the sport mode, which actually, um, it'll allow you to bank it to a 45 degree angle so you can really get going. They claim that it goes 45, but actually out here downwind, I was able to get it up to over 50 miles an oh, hour, wow. which is pretty cool. Cool. Um, the other thing that it has within the app is active tracking. Yes. And this is where, say you went run around in that field, I could highlight you, put a little square around you and hit go, uh -huh. and it's gonna chase you yeah. for the rest of your life. So it's sensing you, it visually sees you, it knows where you are, and it knows where you sleep. What? Uh, mm. Okay. We got a chance to test it. We're gonna check that out a little bit later. Um, but one, one of the other features is uh, it has tap to fly. And this is literally where if you're flying around and you see something in the distance and you yeah. wanna fly there, you I just, just tap, tap, on it. tap it on the screen. Nice. And we'll give that a try today. We haven't okay. really got a chance to mess with that. So you guys did a test to test the battery life, but how's it compared to the three? The three, first off, has really, really good battery life. It'll fly 15 to 20 minutes easily. And they rate this at 28 minutes. And okay. we did a test. My battery, for some reason, it wasn't charged all the way. At, it was actually about 96%. Okay. Um, so Austin's Phantom 3 had a little bit of a head start. And this one actually ended up flying about three or four minutes longer oh, wow. than the Phantom 3. And we just okay. did a hover test and let them run uh, until the battery died and it landed automatically. Uh, but, but all in all, the battery life is really phenomenal on this thing. So so we're safe to fly. We got 13 GPS's, satellites. You're gonna take both sticks mm -hmm. and put them down into the middle. Oh, okay. I've actually never started one up. Oops. So. I'm mowing the grass. Oh, that's what it is. Is it just the grass? Yeah, it's that stick. <laughs> All right, so left stick, push it up, and it's gonna take off straight into the air. Push it forward a little bit on the right stick. And you're flying. We're going. Now you have more experience with uh, with actual airplanes than you do multi-rotors. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, You've flown a couple multi-rotors here and there over the years. Yep. Um, what is, what's your first impression? Handles really nice. I mean, already just like from knowing uh, all the different features with it, I already feel really safe. Cause, so I'm actually going to attempt to crash today rather yeah. than, you yeah. know. You're in uh, normal mode. We're not in sport mode. Okay. The sense and avoid stuff only works in normal mode. Okay. Um, so theoretically, it's going to avoid you from crashing into stuff that's directly in front of you. Okay. It doesn't stop you from uh, going to the side. crashing yeah, sideways or backwards. Okay. That'll probably be the Phantom 5. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, This is great. And we have a little wind today too. But, yeah, uh, it handles it, it pretty handles well. Real well. And the nice thing about these Phantoms, or it quads with the GPS functionality, is if you get into trouble and you don't know what's happening, <laughs> getting a little <laughs> thread in the needle. Sorry, am I, am I getting too brave? No, you're good. If you get into trouble with these, the nice thing about it is uh, you're actually better off if you just let go of the controls. Yeah. You would be better off if you just drop the controller on the ground because the Phantom would actually land itself once the battery gets to a certain level. Except I'd bust your iPad. Level. Yeah, that would, that would not be good. So before we uh, try to crash this thing, okay. let's try out this tap to fly. So if okay. you go into We're here. We're try out the other things first, just in case. So why don't you go ahead and put it up in the sky pretty high, like above the trees and everything just to be safe. Fly away. Goodbye. All righty, that should do it. Yeah. And now, if you just hit tap fly right there. Mm -hmm. And now, see this, see the line on the horizon right there? Yeah. So if you tap somewhere, say you want to go over there, mm -hmm. if you tap above the horizon line, it's going to go over there and go up while it's going there. Okay. And then if you tap below it, it's going to go down and towards it. I got gotcha. you. 
So okay. go ahead and try it. Just tap somewhere. So how about that pile of wood or whatever that is out there? Is that okay right yeah, there? Yeah, try it. Okay. Hit go. Oh, okay. And then while you're flying this little wheel on the controller right here, uh -huh. that's your gimbal. So you can actually look, oh, nice. look around. Okay. You can see it. It actively tracks where the thing is, even if you move the gimbal. See how it wow. keeps it in its crosshair? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> is, it, is it going? Very, very, very slowly. <laughs> it knows who's flying, so it's proceeding with it's caution. A, it goes, it's extremely slow. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, right there. Try bumping that little oh, okay. lever up. That's your throttle. Oh, I got gotcha. you. There she goes. So you got the little slider on the right, which controls your speed. It's going down. Descending, it says. Now it's going back up. But it's going there. Yeah. Now, it is cool feature. I don't really know what you would use this for, uh -huh. unless you're just really, really lazy. You don't <laughs> want to fly there. You don't want to move the stick to fly there. Uh, um, yeah, it must have overshot. It, it, just, still it just keeps going. Oh. Hey, a little. So you hit stop? You can hit stop at any time to stop it. Okay. Okay. Well, that works. Like I said, I don't know what real world application right. you would use that for, uh -huh. but it is kind of a cool feature. Do so you want to try sport mode? Oh, sure. So the only difference with sport mode is that it banks further. So it's going to be a little bit more touchy. Okay. The controls are a little bit more sensitive and it's faster. Okay. And it doesn't have the uh, don't don't crash. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have the sense in a void. So why don't you bring it up nice and high? So that way you're not going to hit accidentally go into the trees because we don't have any sense in a void. And I'll just put you into sport mode for just a couple seconds just so you can feel how it Feel. It's not really that much different, just okay. a little bit more agile. So okay. flip this switch and now give it a little. Oh, yeah. It's still pretty easy though. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. And like I said earlier, we actually got this up to 53 or 52 miles an hour. Sweet. Downwind. All right, you want to try crash it? Yes. <laughs> All right. So right behind you here, we have Stefan's window. And I've always wanted to just crash right into that window. Could you imagine? <laughs> I said this in the Phantom 3 episode, but the thing I like about Phantoms and DJI is it, it works exactly how you would expect it to. Um, so we're out of sport mode, right? So yeah, let's just double check our settings <laughs> here. So we have sense. Yep, should be good to go. Exit out of there. So why don't you bring it down just a foot lower, two foot lower. I'll let you go at your own speed. I've tested this a little bit, so I know what's going to happen, but just try bringing her in there, see what happens. Coming for you, Stefan. Hey. Oh, I didn't expect it to stop that quick or that far away. And it actually, wow. even when you're out here, yeah. it's actually even sensing the wall right there. So even right now, it's seeing that yeah. 30 feet away, it's seeing that. Bring it in full speed. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. It is cool. Let's try one more time. I really want to go through that window. Oh, <laughs> it's almost frustrating. All right, so that's a wall. Um, I'd be interested to see how it handles like something that's a little bit different shape. Uh -huh. So we got this line of poles right here. You want to see if you can uh, line that up and just run it right into that pole. One thing that should be should we should mention. <laughs> there it goes. No, it doesn't run into it. Uh, you're actually giving it full stick. Were you going full speed into the wall? Yeah. And it, the reason why it looks slow is because the Phantom, it is close, uh, though. the Phantom feet. Four in normal mode is actually a little bit dubbed down. Um, so it's actually more docile than the Phantom 3, uh -huh. but the nice thing is is you have sport mode. So right. it is slower when you're in normal mode than the Phantom 3, um, but when you flip it into sport mode, obviously it's oh. faster. That's pretty impressive that it recognizes that yeah. little pull. Yeah, for sure. And the other Do cool it. thing, the other cool thing is uh, you can actually use active tracking and like so say you're out there and I'm active tracking, I select you, yeah. the Phantom's following you, and you walk and weave between those poles. Can we try it? It's gonna, yeah, we can try it. Yeah. All right, so let me bring this in. We'll start up here. I'm gonna leave it at this altitude. Yeah. So going out there, I'm gonna go into smart mode. We're gonna go into active tracking. Um, so there's Josh. All you gotta do is just drag over him. It senses him. 
and then you hit go. All right, you're good to go. And here he goes, he's going through the poles. The Phantom so far is doing pretty good. Still sees him, even on that concrete, which is pretty cool because he's wearing all gray and stuff. Similar contrast to the concrete and it stayed on him the whole time. Uh oh, here comes a tree. <laughs> So you notice I'm not touching the sticks and when you're in active tracking mode, the Phantom's automatically gonna favor the directly behind the person wherever it's going. Um, and the reason why is because the sensors are only going to, uh, they're only gonna sense things that are directly in front of the Phantom. So that's why um, it always stays behind the subject. If the subject's going that way, it's gonna be on at six o'clock. You can unlock the feature. So we're actually still tracking you. See, you have a square around you. Yeah, yeah. Makes and you feeling easy. While, while you're tracking, you can hit left and right, and it will actually pan around you <laughs> while keeping you in the frame at the same time. That's cool. And that goes the same for forwards. You can bring it in closer or further away. It is really slow and docile when you do this, but it works really well. It's really good for getting those cinematic shots. Oh, that's really gonna take selfies to the next level. <laughs> that's for sure. And then you can also go up and down. That's really cool. You did a little great, creepy. Man. It is creepy. <laughs> Could you imagine if you just had a drone, if you just went to active track somebody randomly? Yeah, don't don't get any ideas. <laughs> so you guys got a chance to really test this out and put it, push the limits up the other yep. right? We really wanted to push the active track into the limits and see what it could really do. So we used uh, John Fury's ATV mm -hmm. and we all loaded up into there and we wanted to see how fast it could go while tracking, totally autonomously chasing us. Wow, it's doing a heck of a job. It's also adjusting its speed while it's orbiting. Ah! <laughs> that was sketchy. That was sketchy. <laughs> Peter's a crazy driver, and it appears to be tracking us. Let me know if you should go faster. I'll take it slow for the first lap around the field. We'll just see what happens. We got drones chasing us. So it seems to be doing a really good job. Welcome to drive test. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna give it right aileron. See what it does. Would you look at that? This is currently just 10 miles an hour. That's fine. Look at the Phantom over to the right. Oh yeah, look at that. I bet, I can't really see the footage because it's so sunny. All right, we're going in front. Let's see how it does with us. Wow. It's actually, it's actually working pretty well. It's speed management, it, it kind of falls behind once it gets behind us. Right, I'm pinning the stick, that's why it's doing that orbit right now. All right. I am so messed up right now. 25. What? 25? All right. I'm gonna, I'm, I let go of the stick so we're not orbiting. It's trying to catch up. It's, it's trying to catch up. <laughs> it's hot out our six. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna push forward, which is gonna bring it closer to us if it has enough juice. It appears to be falling behind. It's still tracking us. That's far away. All right, now we're just down to 20. All right, we're back down to 20. I'll let you guys catch up. I'm, I'm gonna push forward on the stick again. See if it'll catch up. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's slowly gaining on us. Now I could also pull backwards on the stick and make it go further away. You wanna do a uh, high speed run? Okay, 40 miles an hour, here we go. It's a high speed test. We'll see what happens when we go faster than the Phantom can go and see how long it'll track us for. All right, ready? Here we go. We're at 20 miles an hour. It's still tracking us. We're at 40 miles an hour. We're at 50. All right, it lost us. It lost us. Wow, that was intense. 
intense. <laughs> So we're doing a high speed, high altitude. We're at 150 feet above the ground. It still has us. So definitely having more altitude helps. Yep. I had it at 45, that was our fastest speed. The other thing that we really wanted to push to the limits was the sense and avoid. I'm going full speed. Here we go. Full speed. Go, Phantom, go. <laughs> and uh, we actually tried, we had to try really hard to get it to fail, but we, we did get it to fail. Uh, basically what we did is we had it track me. It was following me and we were walking down a line of trees that I was weaving in and out of. Okay. And now uh, the trees didn't have any leaves on them and they kind of are kind of smaller trees. Mm -hmm. And it got caught up on a rogue branch that was sticking out the side gotcha. and it finally did crash. Oh no! Oh! Oh! The crazy thing is, is that it didn't break. Nothing broke. Yep. It actually fell from about 10 or 15 feet. The battery ejected. It did cut off the end of the video clip, but okay. the rest of the video clip, all of the 10 minutes before that was all preserved. But the footage was fine. The, everything was, didn't even break a prop. Nice. Which is, I was really impressed by that. Yeah, it's really cool. It handles really well. I mean, really, I felt really comfortable and I don't have a lot of experience with multi-rotors, so it was great. Yeah, the Phantom 3 was super easy to fly. This is even easier, I'd say. Um, you almost have to try to crash these things. Yeah. You have to do something really, really evil to get these things to crash. Now, in this episode, we really wanted to showcase the new features of the Phantom 4. So we didn't really do much of what it's really designed for, which is aerial photography. Yes. Yeah, this is definitely designed and marketed to the creative type of people. Right. Um, they don't. They actually don't advertise these things to hobbyists very much. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because it's, it's literally a tool to get great aerial photography and video. Yeah, and it's a great way to feel at ease while yes. you're doing it as well. So you can focus on your shots and not focus on whether or not you're going to crash. Yeah, very little focus is put on flying. It's yeah. all about capturing the, the moment. All right, thanks you guys for watching and let us know what you want to see us do with the Phantom 4 in the future. Yep, and if you guys haven't checked us out on social media, we've been doing a lot of live video streaming on both Periscope and Facebook. Yep. So if you haven't looked us up on those apps, you should do it now. All right, see you guys. See next you guys. Time.